Now we are going to discuss lecture 13. So this is again CMOS inverter, but we are going to discuss the delay of the CMOS inverter. So this is the reference chapter from the Cetera Smith textbook and the recorded materials from last spring and uh, Professor Asif Khan. All right, so this is a delay. If you think about the inverters in the chain, that means we have multiple inverters uh, connected together like this. So one inverter is driving another. So if you have the signals to propagate, it will take some time and there will be delay for the signals to go through this inverter chains. So in the digital circuit, if you think about the delay, that is like the input. It's going to have this low to high transition and output from high to low, but there will be delay. If you look at the real waveform in the circuit, if you consider the transistor really implements the inverter, then if you measure the real waveform, the analog waveform, in terms of the voltage, if the input is ideal, like a rectangle pulse, like this, the output actually will have some decay function in the waveform due to the more like a RC delay. So it will take some time for the signals to uh, switch from low to high and high to low. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss what causes this and how to calculate this delay. So here we see this uh, inverter driving another inverter. And uh, to make it simple, we are going to approximate the second inverter as a load capacitor to the first inverter. So here is the output of the first inverter will be attached to this capacitor. And this capacitor represents all the capacitance that is uh, attached to this output load. So this is a circuit we are going to analyze in this lecture. Like one inverter drive a capacitor. This is generally applicable to the digital circuit. The digital circuit is always like some logic function drive a capacitor load. And then we're going to have some definitions in the propagation delay. So if you think a generic input waveform, that is something like this. And then the output will be opposite. But there will be some delay here. So we define it, the input switch from low to high at 50%. If we think this is a starting point, then we look for the output to change from high to low, also to the middle point, 50%. And then the delay here is defined as a TPHL. This is the important definition. And the TP is a propagation delay. And HL is high to low transition. So this is respect to the output. Output high to low. So that's why it's TPHL. Similarly, we can define the TPLH. That is, start with the input high to low, 50%, and then output low to high, 50%. This delay. This is again, this is respect to the output low to high. So it's respect to the output 
have to emphasize this HL and LH. So why do we care about this? So we can take the average low to high and high to low and then define it as TP. Of course, for the matched condition, the matched CMOS, then the high to low and low to high will be the same as we discussed in the lecture 12. If it's matched, the NMOS, PMOS are the same and everything is symmetric. So the high to low transition, low to high transition, like 1 to 0, 0 to 1 switching, will be the same speed. This is a matched condition. But in general, then you can define the average as this TP. And then we will say that the minimal clock cycle will be this 2TP or this TPHL plus TPLH. So why is that? So for the clock cycle, you see that the waveform here for the digital signals, you represent 0 and 1 in those uh, voltage levels. But here, this plateau region of the voltage high can be shortened if you want to run the circuit faster. So this part can be shortened. If we shorten this part, that means we are going to have the transition like this. Once it goes from low to high, and then we immediately go from high to low. That will be limited by this TPHL and the TPLH because you need to finish this low to high, high to low transition. So you need to wait for this TPHL and TPLH. So that means you are going to shift this TPLH here. And that will determine the minimal clock cycle in the digital circuit. In other words, that is the maximum clock frequency. F max is one over T min. That is one over T one over two T P. So this is generally true for any digital circuit, not necessarily in the inverter. It's also true in the, for example, LAND gate, LOR gate, and so on. So this delay basically determines the clock. Any questions? And a few more words. Uh, the rising edge can also be defined as 10% of the voltage waveform to 90%. And then the uh, falling edge from 90% to 10%. But we are not going to uh, discuss more on those rising and falling edge. Uh, what is important in this class is this TPHL and TPLH. That will determine the clock frequency. And next, let's look at one interesting circuit. That is this ring oscillator. So here we have three inverters connected in a loop like this. And we say that this is a oscillator. Why is that? If you think about the input is one, then the output from the first inverter will be zero. That means the input to the second inverter, then the output of the second one will be one, and then similarly you can get this is zero. So this zero will be propagated back. That's the same node actually. So the input to the first inverter now will become zero. So that means this input, this node voltage 
go through one to zero transition. And then this is a zero to one, and then one to zero, zero to one. And then it will keep this loop going. So this circuit will oscillate by itself. As long as you power up the circuit, that means you apply the VDD to the inverter. Then this inverter will start oscillating. There are some noise in the circuit to start with, but with this uh, configuration, those noise will be amplified to the 1 and the 0, and then it will propagate like this. If you see the waveform of those three nodes, V1, V2, V3, it will be something like this going here. So initially, for example, the V1 has a 0 to 1 transition. Then the V2 here will have 1 to 0 transition. But from V1 to V2, we need to wait for the TP. So that is the uh, output high to low transition. And here, let's make it simple, assume that it's matched. So we can use TPLH equals to TPHL equals to TP. So let's make it simple. So here, you will wait for one TP for the V2 to change. And then from V2 to V3, you will wait another TP. And then V3 back to this V1, you wait another TP. Now this V1 will have high to low transition. So here you have three TP for the wave one to stay in the high voltage. And after that, then V1 will go will wait another three TP. To switch if you follow this uh, waveform. So in total here from the rising edge to another rising edge. By definition this is one clock. This will be 6 TP. In other words, the frequency is 1 over 6 TP. Here, this is for three inverters in the loop. If you make it a generic N inverter, in loop, then the frequency will be 1 over 2 n tp. In this example, n is 3, so it's 1 over 6 tp. And uh, let's look at another example. If you have two inverters in the loop, what is the frequency? If there is a frequency, then what is the frequency? Any idea? So first of all here, this one, is this a oscillator? The answer is no. Because if this is 1, this will be 0, and then output will be 1. So this is a stable. This is a stable circuit. And later we will see that this is a way to match the memory states. This is a match. So you can stabilize the signals here. You can remember the state. It's like a memory. So we match the state. So here, very important to make the oscillator the number of inverters in the loop n needs to be all the number 3, 5, 7 and so on if it's an even number then it will be 
stable like this. So n needs to be all the number. And also for this ring oscillator, it may have practical applications because if you look at this, this is a way to generate the clock on the chip. So actually the ring oscillator is the simplest way to generate the clock signal on your microprocessor. But uh, uh, in the real design, it's more complicated than this one because this one, the uh, frequency is not very stable with respect to the, for example, the VDD variation or temperature. So in the real circuit, we have to design more complicated circuit to stabilize uh, this oscillation. But this is the simplest way in principle to generate the clock on the chip. Any questions? Yes, this equation only works when the n is all the number. Because only when you have all the number of inverters in the loop, it will oscillate. All right, I think the time is up. Uh, just a reminder for the homework uh, three, it's due uh, Friday midnight. So please submit before that. Any final questions before we stop here today? If no, then thank you.